five for three of our exploits, and we are with Bonfire. Hey, what's going on? And we're with two members of Nascent Gaming, competitive Call of Duty team, Nascent Hybrid, and Nascent Squeaks. Yeah, how you doing? It's Hybrid here. Um, we pretty much just, uh, we're AMs. So we're trying to go up to the top, as most teams are. Um, uh, if you could, just follow us on Twitter. It's at uh, Nascent underscore gaming and uh, Squeaks. Uh, yeah, I'm Nascent Squeaks. I'm the, I guess you could say, OBJ support. Um, I mean, we're we're just starting up. We're we're going through a couple roster changes. So, I mean, for the most part, we have our set team, but we're not too sure yet. So, I'm going to do this call out for an anchor, if anyone does play Call of Duty, to go ahead. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Nascent underscore Squeaks. And, um, you know, if you're an anchor and you think you're good and you think you have a chance and you want to do something with your Call of Duty career, go ahead. Right. And just so you guys have some background, they aren't really, like, they're not just random scrubs who play GBs and call themselves, like, good. Like, you guys play, what did you play? It's like 48th at MLG Dallas, I think? Top yeah, 48? 47. 47th, yeah. right. So, I mean, they've been to an MLG event and done pretty well for an AM team. And... You guys are not competing in MLG Anaheim this weekend, but you are competing in future lands, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. So, But that's our first topic is MLG Anaheim, and what do we kind of expect to happen? And I guess, Hybrid, you and I were talking about it earlier, about you said that you thought there was going to be an underdog victory, not you know a typical, like not Optic, not Impact, not Envious, but a different team. Do you want to yeah, throw um, any specific teams out there you're looking for? Um, well, not necessarily any specific teams, but, I mean, there's going to be so much competition there. And although, I mean, Impact is on a, like, four or four tournament wins, I think, something like that. Like, something really like major that. events. Yeah. But, I mean, like, I don't think they'll take this one, and I don't think any pro teams will. Well, I mean, they still have the uh, higher chance of winning, of course, obviously. But, I mean, I feel like the underdogs still have the chance, you know. I look for a team like like I think VVV. They've looked good in scrims lately. They've they went like I mean I know online is online right so it's not yeah. like but still they went like seven and one on MLG Pro scrims and I don't think Optics been in the team house long enough because everybody's freaking out. Oh my god, Optics in a team house. They're gonna start raping everybody. But you know they've only been in it for like a week now. Plus they're going yeah, to the I'm... event a week early. They're leaving. Uh, this this kind of this will go up on Tuesday. This podcast so they will will have left yesterday. They're leaving Monday to go to Anaheim, they said, because they're going to some Red Bull event or something. So, throw the team house crap out the window. I'll, hey, put, yeah. I'll go with VVV or Epsilon from the EU, because they've got, like, an EU god squad, apparently. They're hopping over the pond to go to Anaheim. Really? Yes. Uh, I think they're... Uh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, um, in my opinion... Uh... I think I think uh, yeah, Hybrid's right. An an underdog team is gonna come for sure. Um, I know of this one team uh, who was looking pretty good in scrims. Um, Ignite is their name. They uh, they did a scrim and they posted two of them against like Dare and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Dare and Fear and they uh, beat them pretty pretty bad. But you know, then again, there's the online connection and right. Everything, so you can't really, can't really base it on a random scrim. Right. Like that. Here's what I was like. I got a, not an argument, but a discussion with someone on Twitter one day, and this would be something that we can kind of transition into online COD in general, and still talk about competitive. But like, I was talking to this guy, and he said online means nothing. And I'm like, well, I mean, the really the lag basically of online affects gunfights, right? But if your team is still setting up right, and you're still making your rotations right, and you know you're still doing all that stuff correctly. Like that has nothing to do with your if you're playing online or on land. Like it, it that's unaffected. So obviously you can lose just by losing gunfights, you know, because you're lagging behind the guy you're fighting against. But I mean, you can still tell if a team is doing well, and online can still have a bearing if you're, as long as you're making like the non-lag related plays right. If that makes sense, I guess. Yeah, that and, makes sense. Yeah, and, and that does. Um, you know. It it's said over and over connection is the like one problem everyone has and that's why uh, optic even says it they're like you know before they were in their team house um, connection was a big issue with them because they were everywhere in the U S you know and um, 
they just they say it all the time, you know, they, they might lose a couple times. Like, they can't win every time, but, you know, that's because of connection. Like, I think they're a great team on land. I've seen them play in person. I can say that now. And uh, <laughs> it's it's amazing to watch them play. They are very tactical. Bonfire, do you have anything to add? I know you don't really follow competitive as closely, but you have some kind of idea of the scene a little bit. Yeah, uh... I think competitive game. It's it's overall it's really cool. I'm glad to see Call of Duty um, kind of making its way up the ranks as far as competitive gaming goes, um, and I think that shows when they did the Call of Duty Championships. I, I thought that was cool. I watched that like the the championship round of that, and I thought it was really cool. It's fun. One thing I wish they would implement though, and this is just kind of a my opinion type thing, is I wish they would let you hear what uh, some of the teams are saying. And I understand why they don't, but I wish. Yeah. Like maybe when they post the video or something to rewatch it to hear that because they do can... do listen ins on occasion, but you yeah. find that you don't they don't do it during the event. Like they have they have that built in as a feature now, I think, on podcasting, but they still don't do it very much. Yeah, it, I, I just think it'd be cool because you can see how they're working together as a team, and just I, I think that would make it that much better. Because like for basketball, for instance, like when you get to hear what the coaches are saying to the players, like when it's on TNT and stuff. I like that stuff, and it just it kind of makes you feel like you're inside the game even more at the competitive event. All and right. as far as like an underdog team winning, I think it's always good when an underdog team wins and takes a takes a championship, just because it makes the sport that much more competitive and progresses the sport that much. Right. And this year, like this whole season's been completely dominated by one team. Like Impact's won basically everything that of note. So, see, so even if it's another pro team, like somebody to just beat Impact would be interesting. Of course, it'd also be interesting if they just keep winning to see, like, are they one of the best teams ever if they just win, like, every single land of the season, yeah. but we'll see. Um, something I just thought off, off, the, off the top of my head, which we could talk about, is, and this kind of relates because Bonfire, you know, knows some about competitive but not as much, and this is good a, a good dynamic for this topic, but, like, what do you think that, obviously, competitive COD has grown a bunch like this year, like it's more popular now than it. You know, it's grown more this season than it has like all other seasons combined. But what do you think it could do to bring in more like people who just play the game casually and just don't really know much about it? Like, what could competitive COD do to try to bring those people in and teach well, them more about it? Well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna say, uh, I think they're already, you know, they've already outreached with uh, league play. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, it's it's like it's there for the public, you know. They try to make it. They cancel. They ban perks. They ban uh, kill streaks. You know, they're they're making it like competitive gaming, and uh, I think that's that's big. But you know, I've I've heard opinions from uh, regular uh, public players, and they hate it. They hate being banned and taken away from their FALs and their and their. Uh, Why can't I throw my claymores down? Dang it. Like yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Exactly. They love the explosive things, I guess you would say. Equipment. Yeah, I just, um, there's not I, enough, I don't know. They just don't, like, the average player, the, I think one of the issues, like the average pub player, they know who Optic is maybe uh, for sniping, and they know who Phase is for sniping, but, like, I don't think the, the popular competitive players are, like, known enough outside of the competitive community, one thing. Um, that's another thing. They need to do something whereas, like, I mean, all these teams need support. And even the upcoming, like, AM teams, because, like, that's going to make this, like, I think I think of uh, competitive gaming as kind of like a sport. I mean, you train for it, you practice, I mean, you have a team. It's, it's, uh, it's really, I think uh, more fans would be a lot better, because, I mean, it would make it grow, and uh, I think that's pretty much what would make uh, competitive gaming a lot better. Bonfire, since you yeah. are kind of someone who's not into it as much, what like what would you like to see changed that would I mean obviously we brought up the whole listen in thing, um, but what would if something they could change something to bring you in more, like someone like you, even though you kinda have an idea but you don't follow it like as closely, what would be some changes they could make to get someone like you to follow it more? I would say make it more available. Um to watch now, I know they do some of it like through Twitch and Xbox. Obviously, has a, that partnership now, which, which is great going to the next console generation. But just because there's so many avenues in which you can promote these things now, even if you are an amateur team, 
you know, put your stuff up on Twitch. I think there's another, um, you stream is another one, put it up on there, YouTube, stream it through all those, those avenues as well as make it available through all of the consoles. So including PlayStation. So everyone can kind of just get more exposure to it in, and then when you're broadcasting that, uh, you know, make it like a sporting event, which they kind of, again, I've, my only experience with that is with the Call of Duty Championships, and it was actually really entertaining. But just just keep keep doing that, making it more like sports. And because, because I mean, it's not a physical sport. It's more of, I guess, a mental sport, if you will, or just, you know, it's, it's competitive game. That's what it is, because I know you do practice. You put in a lot of time and effort to it. But just... I think the biggest thing is making it more available. And I think if they in key, include league play into Call of Duty Ghosts, I, I, I think that'll grow a little bit. But I, I'm a public player myself. I'm not keen on the league play just because of some of the community out there. That's kind of a, a different topic, but, you know. I will so say, that, the, I think the community's better, like, in competitive a little bit, at least for the most part. I mean... I get aggravated when you play league play and there's like a 12 year old who's like just came from pups and he's talking crap and then he gets destroyed and he's still talking crap. But I, th- I mean, I think <laughs> yeah. in general, like people in competitive are more, I guess you could use the word respectful of each other, but you know, I don't know. They're just not as annoying and they're not like, they just are yeah, more respectful, I guess is the right word. And they kind of are more chill about it. They're not really trash talking all the time. Yeah. I definitely see that. I had an experience yesterday with, because one of the guys I follow on Twitch, um, he's, I'm not going to name him, but he invited me to play, and I didn't know he was playing league play. So I was just like, all right, I'll play with you. Know, I was online, hopped in. We were in league play, and we hopped in one match. And this is why I don't like league play, because it's, it's people like him, because all he did the entire time, because he was losing, and he hates losing that much, is complained and swore the whole time. And it just made it not fun for anyone involved. So when it's like yeah. that and, and that aspect of that community is what I don't like about it. This is when people are just they're sore losers and yeah. they don't make it fun. Yeah, Cause, I've got cause a, I'm on to play and have fun. Right. You know? And I've got a similar story, actually. So I've been trying to like I've been like I'm not a beast competitive player or anything. I haven't been to a land or anything, but I'm trying to get there. Like that's my aspiration. I'm trying to be like Nascent Gaming. OK, but so I, I was trying to find a GB team to play with more uh, seriously, right? Game battles, for those of you who don't know what GB means. And I, it was me and two of my friends who I already knew. And they found, while I was on vacation in Europe, they found this guy named, I won't name him actually. But um, they found this guy they wanted to play with. So as soon as I got back, they're like, hey, we got this guy who wants to play GBs with us. Do you want to play? And, you know, us four play some game battles. And I'm like, sure. So for about three days, we were you know, playing three or four game battles matches a day. So not a ton, but, you know, we're playing a decent amount. And we weren't doing that well, right? And I don't want to say, like, I'm a beast or anything, because, like I said, I'm not. But I was consistently finishing above this kid, the kid that we didn't know. And he's he was, like, 13 years old, right? And I was consistently finishing above him on the leaderboard. But yet he was being all bossy and everything and acting like he was, like, the team leader and everything. And I'm like, okay, whatever. This isn't, like, that serious of a team, so I'm not going to worry about it. But then, you know, one match we played, and these guys were just destroying us, right? They were just, like, like they clearly knew what they were doing. They might have been, like, an actual serious, like, AM team or something. But they were, like, just, they beat us, like, 8 nothing in CTF or something. We were all just getting dominated. But I, I ended up, like, I only went, like, negative 2, right? Or negative 4. I don't remember. Like, I went negative still, but I wasn't, like, going double negative. And this other kid, the kid that we didn't know, he was going, like, double negative, right? He's, like, 18 and 35 or something terrible like that. And he starts talking, and he's like, oh, let's try – I said, let's try to keep him under 10 caps, right, because it's a 10 cap limit. That's how bad we were doing. And he's like, oh, dude, there's no way we're keeping him under 10 caps. I'm like, dude, there's no point in giving up yet. And then he just, like, goes off on me, right, and he starts, like, screaming at me, and he's like, you give up faster than everybody, and all you're doing is complaining about connection and everything. And this kid just starts freaking out, and I'm like, are you really just, like, that – like, people in competitive, sometimes they just get so – messed up because they're losing and they just start crying about it and like it's not it's like mostly kids but like you look at lots of like younger competitive players they get all like they're so immature and people calling each other out on twitter like i feel like in the competitive community there's lots more like bashing of each other sometimes for no reason and people acting more immature i mean i don't know if you guys have had any uh squeaks in hybrid like had any experiences like that you probably have but anybody who's acted like that kind of Oh, go ahead, Hybrid. Uh, well, I mean, I was going to say, 
arguing and like raging and all that, dude, that's the number one killing of a team. Like, you're you're cutting off the uh, the the communication and you're giving a negative attitude towards your team, and you're not gonna win like that. I mean, a team's a team. Even if you're falling down and, and you're down a couple of flags or anything, there's always an opportunity to come back. The way like the way you overcome an obstacle become that shows how who you are as a team. Like that's it, like I said, anger and all that. That's the number one killing of a team. And and me and me and hybrid, we've been together for a while. Me and him, uh, we used to be duos, uh, doubles partners for GB, uh, game battles. Yeah, and uh, you know we said we wanted to make a team, but we didn't want to just get you know everyone can find you know oh man this guy is so good he's a slayer he goes thirty five and one he gets like zero death and all these kill streaks but you know you got to look at the attitude too the attitude and the chemistry with the team. You know, if he doesn't blend, if you don't blend with others, then it's not going to work because they're, you're not always going to be the winning team. So when you're down, especially in your case, because you were at that 8-0, and almost 10 cap, which is... We were, just, we were just trying to get through the 10 minutes, man. <laughs> just trying to get through, exactly. You know, times like that, you know, you, that's when you need to pull together. And um, I don't know about hybrid, but... in in my opinion, I think we're a comeback team. Uh, oh, there's yeah, a couple definitely. times where we've been we've been far behind, but you know what? We we say, hey, look, we got to get serious. Let's go. Let's let's make our stand right here. No more. Like, let's let's get together and we actually do it. And we get like that three caps in one round uh, and just take the lead and just win off the last ten seconds or have yeah. a final return. You know, it's yeah, great. Yeah. Um... Squeaks actually, uh, his signature is really stopping uh, like last twenty seconds of a CTF game. Uh, like every time over there at Dallas, we played four play. I don't want to put them on the spot or anything, but we're on second game against four play, and uh, well, it was C- CTF. I think we're t- uh, no, we're up two one, I believe. And uh, Squeaks is hiding back in jungle on raid, um, and like he was waiting. It was last 20 seconds. Uh, one of the four play girls were running straight to the flag. And it was like, as soon as they got there, it was about five seconds. And she dives. And Squeaks comes out of nowhere, stops him, gets the return. And we win that uh, whole series. And he was just so hyped up about it. And that gave us the win over us. That's awesome. Okay. I never kill people when they'd often out of the flag. So I'll just blame it on the lag. But whatever. <laughs> you guys want to transition to next-gen console shooters, because that's what we wanted to kind of get into that. Like, tit- yeah, I guess Titanfall, Battlefield 4, COD Ghosts, and I guess that's the primary three, I suppose, we should talk about. Uh, which ones do you think would be more popular in general? Do you think... Ba- I mean, I'm Battlefield's not going to be played competitively. Let's just throw that out the window already. Exactly. Uh, do you think Titanfall maybe will be played competitively? And just in general, what do you think? Like, do you think COD will get kind of dethroned from the number one spot for shooters? And Bonfire, you can go first, I guess. Um, well, it depend, depends on how you define dethroned. As, as far as popularity goes, no. But I think, I feel like if Activision continues to put out a yearly Call of Duty, it 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 will end. It, its popularity will lose. Cause in I, I've heard you say it yourself, Tactical, is that every year you get bored of Call of Duty faster and faster, and th- that's how I feel. In uh, you know I always love coming back playing it after I've taken a break, um, but it, you just get bored of it faster and faster each year. And it used to be you can play the entire year till that next one comes out, and now it's like oh eight months, six months. Now it's kind of like you know three to four so if they keep that up i i I think over time as we go into the next generation consoles there's going to be room for something else to take over the the popularity game um with titanfall i i think it could make its way into competitive gaming possibly but it seems like it's a very large multiplayer game as far as like having a lot of players right and i know there's ai players in there as well with you guys so I, I think with that, I mean, it's. I think it might fall into the Battlefield 4 category where it's going to be just a lot of fun to play, but it's not going to fit for competitive gaming. Squeaks, hybrid? Um, let's see. You, I really don't know. Um, you know, <laughs> right now I, I was really focused with the team, so uh, 
I'm going to be honest, I have no idea how uh, Ghost looks or any of its trailers, but, you know... You haven't missed anything important, I'll just put it that way. Exactly, that's yeah. what I've been hearing. That's that's not good, in my opinion, but... Uh, <laughs> You you gotta look at it like as as long as there's strategic implements and different things that are like put into the game and everything, I think it'll be fine competitively. Um, as for it being the top competitive game, uh, it might not do as well. Especially uh, Oyster, I know you're a big fan of this Titanfall game. Uh, I don't know if you can give me a better description than what I've heard. Uh, but that would be nice right now. <laughs> have you seen uh, Have you seen the the gameplay of it? I know we talked about it a little bit before we started, but have you seen the gameplay demo of it from E3? Uh, I didn't see the demo. Uh, I sort of just looked at the Xbox One and then just left. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, it's it kind of it looks like a Halo type world, right? Like the maps and stuff. But then, and like futuristic weapons, kind of. But it looks more like Call of Duty type weapons in like a Halo world. But it also has like a lot of futuristic elements and like the way you move around the map. Like you can like run up and down walls, kind of, and like jump off walls and like you have a jetpack and stuff like Halo. But then it like, as opposed to Halo, where you know it takes a clip and a half to kill someone, it looked like <laughs> it had fast paced actual like gunfights like COD does and, and things like that. And I mean, for those of you who don't know, it's made by Respawn Entertainment, which was founded by the guys who made COD four and Modern Warfare Two. And they brought like ninety percent of Infinity Wars employees that worked on those games, they brought over to this new company and made Titanfall. So it's made by the same people, but I don't know. I think the fact that it's an Xbox exclusive also, and I think it might be on PC is it on PC? It's on too? PC, yeah. Yeah. PC. But the fact that it's not on PlayStation hurts it as well. That it, I'm assuming you're not going to like make it. You're not going to say, "Oh, it's an Xbox exclusive now," but Titanfall Two is going to be for everybody. So that would probably hurt it a lot as well. It would hurt it if it was on PlayStation. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying it'll hurt it if the fact that it's probably not going to be on PlayStation because it's starting out only on Xbox. So oh, okay. and obviously being an Xbox exclusive hurts it. So I don't see it becoming a PlayStation game as well, which I think hurts it. But, uh, Hybrid, yeah, what do you it, think? Because you haven't really chimed in yet. Um, yeah, like, earlier, what, uh, Bonfire said, that he gets bored, like, y'all say y'all got bored in, uh, about Call of Duty. Um, yeah. the reason might be is, like, y'all are playing public matches, and, like, if you interact more with competitive-wise, that, I think that's what they're focusing a little bit more on now, because, like, competitive is, I don't know, I wouldn't say more exciting and more fun, but to us, like, in my opinion, um, that's, that's what we do. Um, I don't know if you feel the urge, like every game of adrenaline, we're adrenaline junkies pretty much. Um, and like, that's what leads this game is competitive wise, like public. I'm not gonna lie. I played like the first two weeks when the game came out, just so I could see what's good and what's not or whatever. And then after that, I just went straight into league play and just, uh, saw what's banned or whatever. And, uh, as we progress, like they try to make it a little bit more competitive to whereas everything's equal, like how they ban things like the cap 40 and the FAL, the right. FAL, they were so overpowered and they did, I think two, uh, two updates on the, on the cap 40 and it was still like way too overpowered, but they were making updates based on what competitive players were saying though. Yeah. Is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean like that, the reason they put so much complaints in it. Is because honestly, you can't outgun it. Like unless you have a really good shot, and then the guy misses like one or two shots. So and, and that's rare because like competitive players, as in like pros, like they don't miss as much as other people do. You know, like that's the reason right. they're pros. They get things done. Right. Yeah, and I have no argument with you there as far as you know league play and that that's what they're focusing on because they even said it themselves. They 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 brought in league play to get into the competitive scene and make Call of Duty. A competitive game for uh, esports, if you will, and yeah, for I think it also boils down to to why you game. It sounds like you guys game. You're competitive people, so you game to compete with other players, and and that's what you enjoy. For me, I game. I hop online. You know, I play just to have fun, and you know, I make my YouTube videos, and I just love gaming in general. That when when I hop online, I don't, you know, I I like competing, but that that's not the sole reason why I game. 
So I, I think that has part of an aspect to it. So that's a good yeah, point, that... though. Like it depends what you game for, because like I saw people when Black Ops Two first came out, people were complaining, saying, "Oh my God, why is Treyarch, you know, tailoring this game to like one percent of their community?" And somebody's having the phone ring there. Nice hybrid. Anyways. <laughs> But yeah, they were complaining, saying, like, um, why are they tailoring this game to, like, 1% of their community? Because, I mean, at the beginning of Black Ops 2, probably only 1% of COD people actually knew anything about competitive. Like, I'm not going to lie, I barely knew anything about competitive when Black Ops 2 first started. But that's, like, the balance they have to have, is you have to recognize that still at this point, a majority of people who are into Call of Duty are in it for public matches and just screwing around. Like, even though the competitive community is still growing, like, it's still a small minority compared to, you know, just casual players. And while competitive is more fun to a lot of people, they still have to make sure that they build the game to where it's fun for everybody. Like, I think they've got a good balance right now in Black Ops 2. Like, you can still go on Black Ops 2 and play a public match if you want to. Like, I still, I play like 50-50 between league play and public match or game battles, competitive-related things in public match. And when I play public match, I'm usually going for, like, a gameplay for a YouTube video, or I'm just playing with some of my friends or subscribers who, you know, don't really want to play competitive. And that's fun, but then playing competitive or, like, league play is also fun. So, I mean, I think they've got a good balance, but they have to make sure that they don't, you know, build the game completely for competitive players to where a bunch of people don't like it, but they don't also build the game, like... Infinity Ward, you guys will know, because I wasn't really into competitive during Modern Warfare 3. I don't know if you guys were, but, you know, apparently Modern Warfare 3 was terrible for competitive COD. And, you know, COD Ghost is an Infinity Ward game. And they said they're going to support competitive, but, you know, Robert Bowling also said, screw Last Stand before Modern Warfare 3 came out. And they still had Last Stand, so you can't really trust what they say. But, you know, they have to make sure they get a good balance, I guess is what I'm saying, between competitive and non-competitive and making sure everybody's happy. Well, and Robert Bowling isn't with Infinity Ward anymore. Right, but right, but still, I mean, generally, say. No, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. But I mean, you just have to make sure you have that balance. Yeah, and w- one of the things, that the, one of the reasons I feel that Call of Duty is getting, um, I get bored with it faster, and maybe, and again, maybe I'm the minority, but as you look over the generations of Call of Duties from you know the original Modern Warfare up till now. As far as the actual core gameplay mechanics are concerned, not much has changed. And I think exactly. when you, when you feed, when you over the years you just feed that to the community, and you essentially, and I hesitate to say push it down their throats, but you know whatever, that's what I'm saying. They, it's, it it gets tiresome, and it gets tiresome faster. When yeah, I actually made it. I made a commentary about that. Where I basically said the reason why Call of Duty gets boring so fast is because. You can do all the reskinning you want. You can add in. You can change the time period. You can add new guns, new perks, whatever. But then, you know, in the end, it's still you're running around with an assault rifle or an SMG or whatever or a sniper, and you're still having gunfights with people. Like it's still the same thing every single year, either way. So yeah, I, and honestly, I think since I, I feel like there's there's been a slight decline as far as popularity goes as far as what people are enjoying but i feel like if they were to take a year off and do every other year kind of seems seems kind of like what battlefield is doing i think it would benefit them because it would give them more time in development more time to take chances with some of the gameplay since they've built uh, this massive audience and market they it, i think it'd be good for them to try i, I doubt they'll do it because their plan is safe but i would like to see that right <clears throat> Harvard, do you have anything to add? Um, I don't know. Like back to what we were saying about uh competitive. Um, we were he was talking about how league play and everything, and they added COD casting, so that's another big yeah, thing. Yeah, that, that was a good add as well. Yeah, that was huge because, like, as you said a long time ago in the conversation, they added uh, listen-ins, which is uh really really big because I mean, you do want to hear what other people say, so. Like what they're saying, and you know, call outs and all that, and if, see if they get frustrated or not. Right, and we'll have to see yeah. if Infinity Ward tries to carry this like momentum over to COD Ghost because I mean, Call of Duty, like competitively, it's like the other day, Optics Quad Stream, now that they're all in the same house and they're all streaming at the same time, I mean, those four guys alone had more viewers on Twitch than StarCraft did as a game. So, like, obviously. COD is growing competitively, but it'll be up to Infinity Ward to see um, if they can carry that over to the next COD. 
Uh, do you guys want to transition now? Uh, Bonfire, you can pick our next topic. Whatever. Yeah, I was going to say one, one thing about Call of Duty Ghosts is because one thing that scares me is that at E3, arguably the biggest gaming convention of the year, they didn't show any multiplayer. And that, that worries me. Because I, I don't know if it's because it's the same and they know that, or if it's just it's not ready. And it, like I said, that worries me. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm anxious to see multiplayer because that's what I wanted to see, but I didn't see it. Yeah, or maybe they're just trying to build suspense. Um, yeah. Like, let you see it. Uh, I don't know if they're going to show any multiplayer gameplay, but they might have to in order for people to buy it, because I don't know. Yeah, they will it, before it comes out at some point. I mean, but... uh, maybe they'll take a risk, like, not showing it, and that's, I don't know, that's sort of risky. But, I mean, they do it just so they could do something different. And, like, whoever takes the risk is pretty much going to... It's pretty much is gonna experience if they if that was uh, successful or not. I mean, it's in an industry. It's all about risk. I know you have to play it safe at times, but sometimes to get ahead of the competition, you got to do things. Right. I agree. In to transition, that's what Microsoft was trying to do. But as most of you all probably know, um, um, the Xbox pulled a 180 on the, the DRM policies. So. They no more DRM, no more checking in online every 24 hours. You can play used games, you can share your games with your friends. It's essentially they've reversed all those changes to what what we have currently and what the PlayStation 4 is doing. So that that kind of you know makes me wonder, and I want to ask you guys: Do you think that change and reversal of those policies is going to help the Xbox and you know beat the PlayStation 4 as far as the console wars go? Um, actually, yeah, I really do think it's gonna, it's gonna give Xbox another, like, a bump, because I was talking to a lot of my friends that, uh, play competitive, and, like, just Xbox itself, um, and they were saying that they were gonna switch over to PS4, which worried me a little bit, I asked them why, and they said because of what Xbox was doing, and, um, that's, that's, uh, interesting how they, uh, flipped it, because they saw that they were gonna lose people, so they, they made a change for us. And now I believe that uh, more people are going to start just going back to the Xbox One. So, right. The only problem is, is that you gotta hope that Microsoft didn't like. Cause I've seen people in comment sections on YouTube videos and stuff, and I've already made a the whole video about this whole topic, so I won't get into my specific thoughts completely, cause I'll just be repeating myself. But you have to hope that Microsoft didn't like damage themselves too much to where because i've seen people saying well i don't care because the fact that they even tried doing that pisses me off so much that i'm not even going to attempt to go back now so you gotta hope that people are willing to forgive basically them trying to more or less be money whores in a way Talk, and, talking about oh, um sorry talking yeah, about like, change in the xbox um is it true i i really don't know i'm not too sure this is why i'm asking uh that you're gonna always need a phone cable cord into it or something like that in order I, haven't, to... I haven't heard about that actually i know the only thing i know you have to have is now you don't have to be online every 24 hours obviously but other than having the connect plugged in all the time um if you want to have tv you have to like have something hooked up for your tv to be able to get the tv services i think yeah exactly yeah, i think your tv box just goes its output goes to the xbox and then because as an input so then it's going to go everything through the Xbox to the TV. Right. Okay. As okay. far as actually like phone goes, I, I haven't heard anything like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I was talking, I, I actually went to go to uh, Home Depot uh, to uh, get a longer Ethernet cord for my Xbox. And uh, the guy out of nowhere said, is this for an Xbox? And I was like, yeah. He's like, soon you're going you're gonna to always need a connection onto your Xbox. Too, uh, or for the Xbox One, um, in order to play any games or anything, even just for fun, like not just online. So that blew my mind. I, I wasn't too sure if that was correct or not, but it confused me, and I was like, whoa. And I still, to this day, because that was a couple weeks ago, uh, haven't done any research on that, so I'm not yeah. too sure. Well, I mean, they did a re basically all they did was that they originally said that you would have to connect to the internet every 24 hours to play even a single player game, even a non online game, just to prevent piracy and things like that. And that used games were basically going to be kind of impossible. Not impossible, but they were basically making it so that used games you couldn't do it via disc to disc anymore. It had to be like digital stuff and 
possibly having fees involved and possibly not being able to loan your game to everybody, but they basically just backtracked on all of that and said um, no online active, no online connection required at all, and um, you can use use games the way you would before now. But um, I don't know. I know Bonfire. You play some PC games, if I'm not mistaken. And no, actually, I don't. You don't. Okay, never mind <laughs> no. then. I thought we talked about that at one point. I guess not. But um, <laughs> Squeaks, do you, Squeaks, do you play uh, like Steam or anything like that? Do you play any PC games or no? I'm not a big fan of PC. Uh, some, one of my friends tried to get me into Warcraft, and uh, oh god, yeah, that's not my that's not my uh, game. I hate to say it. But um, so the whole thing with Steam. And I feel stupid now because I thought game site Bonfire played on PC, well, but no. But, I know um, all about Steam, but right. I, I just I'm not a big PC gamer. I can't do the whole keyboard mouse thing. It just exactly. Yeah, exactly. I tried playing That's COD right. on PC, and I I just got I just get wrecked, dude. Because I can't I, aim. I, I can't aim. <laughs> just, don't, yeah, don't I mean, I grew up a console gamer. If I don't have a controller in my hand, I'm not playing. Exactly. Uh, going to MLG Dallas, I saw StarCraft and League of Legends. StarCraft though. Uh, caught my eye because the way they press that keyboard so fast for like an like a thirty minute period I the did. whole time I cannot do that. And I, oh, and dude! I... I saw this one video on Kotaku's website. It was like this, this like like competitive. competitive. I, I think it was. I think it was StarCraft. Yeah, it was a like a well known competitive StarCraft gamer. And it just the he was typing on that keyboard so fast so doing all fast. these different things, and I was just like, I don't even know what you're doing. I, exactly. It was crazy. Yeah, crazy. it's it's a whole different culture too, because like I know these some of my friends at school, they're like big into League of Legends. Like they're not pro players or anything like that, but they play it a lot, and they're they're like one of them plays competitively some, and the competitive community in League of Legends is like way bigger than COD, so it's harder to get you know known in that, but. They, like, I played with them once, and it's just so intense, and they're, like, spamming, like, all you have to do is click the mouse button once to move your character, but they just, like, spam it constantly, and, like, and they're, like, typing so fast in the chat and stuff, and they're, like, and it's just so, like, intense, and they're, like, so into it, it's ridiculous, I don't know. It's like, how do you not get carpal tunnel, man? Like, you're spamming, you hit the right mouse button probably about a thousand times per match. But then, but then Bonfire said the same thing I was thinking. You know, if I'm not holding a controller in my hand, it's not the same thing. You know, yeah. Um, it's just yeah. like it's a big thing with me. I've grew, I grew up with that too as well. Yeah. yeah same well, here. and kind of bringing it back to to what we were talking about when you were saying like Steam, um, it, that that's one thing that I'm kind of disappointed about with the whole um, DRM reversal from microsoft just because i was looking forward to seeing how their like their online sharing or family sharing was going to work and some of their cloud the cloud gaming and i feel like that's going to postpone the implementation of that since they're reversing those changes um overall though i think it's it's a good move it's a good pr move because they just they screwed up so bad it wasn't even funny but so it was a good PR move, but I, I'm disappointed to, to think that the transition to digital distribution is going to be slowed down. Even though myself, I, I like to have the physical discs. I like to have my collection. That's Again, that's the way I grew up. Um, so making that transition will be difficult for me, but I was kind of looking forward to seeing how that would be implemented in the next generation consoles. As far as Xbox or PlayStation, I, I think you have the, the core Xboxers and the core PlayStationers. Um, I, in my primary consoles and Xbox. However, I think those people in the middle that are on the fence, it's about principle. And I think that's what this whole argument was because most people nowadays, you play online, you have internet connection. The right. majority of us do. It, that That's not the issue. It's more of an issue of principle. Right. And so I, I think those people, if like you were saying, if you, if you can forgive Microsoft for what they did, then you'll go back to the Xbox. If not, then... You know, you'll you'll transition over to the, P the PlayStation Four. Personally, for me, um, just because I I like what Sony's doing, I, I like that the fact that they acknowledge that they screwed up with the PlayStation Three, with the price and the the slowness on some of their games. That they, they came out and said, "Hey gamers, we know we screwed up. Here's what we're doing. This is who we are." And I like that. I can respect that. I want to support that. Um, I'll get both consoles just because I like some of the exclusives. Because you the got Xbox. so much YouTube money. Yeah, I'm rolling in it, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> well, one of the things that also scares me about the whole Microsoft reversal is that 
they were they came out so confident with this DRM thing and the always online in their future with digital distribution and they backed out on it. So right. that makes me think that maybe they aren't so confident and that they're just kind of winging it and well, it probably I, I scared the, some... people probably scared the crap out of them because everybody said they weren't buying it. Like oh, yeah. everybody like there was literally zero positive feedback after the Xbox like uh, reveal thing. It probably they probably just got scared. They're like, "Holy crap, if we don't do something, nobody's going to buy this and we're going to go out of business. So I'm going to lose my job." So, I mean, it's good that they're listening, but you're right. It kind of shows that maybe they're kind of weak in their decision making, I guess. But also the whole Steam thing, like the re- the reason Steam can make a PC game so cheap is because they can basically say, okay, we want to make this game cheap this weekend, so we're going to do it. And that's because it's all digital, right? They don't have to get a Walmart, they don't have to get a GameStop and say, hey guys, lower your price this weekend, because they, they control everything. So Xbox could have done that if they stuck with the whole digital gaming thing, but now that they've backed off of it, they may not be able to do stuff like that as easily. Yeah, I think it's going to keep the price point around 60 bucks, which is kind of disappointing because when you get into that digital age of gaming and you're just downloading games it pushes the price down and the developers get more money which in turns means more games and it's just a win-win for everyone but i the, obviously the gaming community is not ready for it and it, what, one of the things i was going to say that i forgot to mention about microsoft and well, another thing that i i think or i disagree with as far as their changes in drm is it shows lack of leadership at the top because they again they came out so confident and then they changed it, and I just the, there's lack of direction and leadership, I think, in their in their company, and I think this proves it, especially with the PR flops. Yeah, right. and, and going back, um, I want I want to talk. Y'all were talking price on a stream or Steam or whatever it's called. Sorry, I'm not PC related. <laughs> Steam, yeah. Steam, okay. Um, talking about price, I want to talk about the price of the Xbox One. I heard it was four ninety nine. That yes, that is correct. correct. That, it's four ninety nine. PS three is three ninety or four. Sorry, PS four is three ninety nine. Do you do you do you think that um you you get for what you pay for? There's so okay. many more features. Like okay, here's the re- the reason it's a hundred dollars more. I think is because they threw the Connect in there as a requirement. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably why it's more expensive, which is a mistake on their part because most people don't even want the Connect. Yeah. But I think they're trying to force this whole like I think conceptually, I thought the whole idea of the voice command and everything was cool at first, but now that I think about it more and more, I'm like you have this, all this good stuff going. You know, you've got the fact that you're adding in TV and you're integrating all this stuff with like ESPN and fantasy football and and you're throwing Skype in there and people can multitask. Like we could be having the Skype conversation right now, but also be playing Call of Duty together at the same time and have it both on our screen at the same time, right? Like all that stuff is cool, but the more and more I think about it, the idea of having to throw the connect in there just so people can, you know, switch menus by waving their arms around there like artards, it, it doesn't it doesn't seem like much of a benefit and i think that hurt him because that's probably what drove the price up yeah boxing it with the connect definitely drives the price up to answer your question um no i don't think you always get what you pay for when it comes to the consoles just because microsoft is a hundred dollars more doesn't mean you're getting a better quality product because the original xbox 360 i was just looking at it same price when it retailed in 2005 for 4.99 and what happened to it red ring of death exactly so the PlayStation, yeah, it was a higher price. And in that case, yes, it was a better quality product. But Sony, I think just overall, is a better manufacturer of their products. The PlayStation 3 has had less failures than the Xboxes. So, and that that's another reason why I lean towards Sony just at the, in the beginning, again, the beginning. Because they're just, I, I like what they're doing. And my fear is that with this new Xbox, with the Xbox One, is who's to say, given you know, past scenarios with the Red Ring of Death, that this new Xbox isn't going to have a similar type problem with it, especially with well, the Always Connect. Well, when it came down to uh, Xbox, actually, Xbox, the only reason that Red Ring of Death happened was because they had to rush their product. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I believe that PS, PS3 was going to come out before it. Um, and I think they, they, just, they just had to rush what they were doing. I don't think they took enough time as they should have. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, That's right. Sony also, just looking at companies, the two companies, what is Microsoft known for? They're known for Windows, you know, stuff like that. They're known for software, where Sony seems like maybe more of a hardware company. So that's just one basic kind of 
difference between the two. I think Xbox appears to have more, like, features in it. It's, as far as, you know, do you get what you pay for? Like, it seems like you could do more with an Xbox One than you could with a PlayStation 4. But it does come down to, you know, durability as well. And, like, I talked to Wackman about this, I think, on one of the previous three-bar shows. Um, like, he's got small kids, right? And you have to have the Kinect on to be able to play Xbox. What if, what happens when one of his kids, you know, they're playing in the house or whatever, they bump into his table or whatever, his Kinect's sitting on, his Kinect falls over and breaks. Now he or, can't play Xbox because his Kinect broke. Like, that just seems kind of dumb. Kinect. Right. Oh. Yeah, then he has to buy a new Kinect. <laughs> what about a uh, warranty? <laughs> yeah, just the whole Kinect thing is just really hurting them, I think. Well, yeah, Plus the privacy again. concerns, too. Like, is Microsoft spying on you, which I doubt it, but it's always a possibility. True. Um, hopefully, I mean, it's more like the the IRS and NSA, but gathering data conversation. Different. Okay, off topic. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what if it came down to it? Um, I'm gonna ask y'all individually. Squeaks, what would you buy out of the Xbox One and PS4? Oh, definitely. I've always been an Xbox person. I've never been a PS4 person, just because the controls are opposite of what I've always been doing. And I don't like that. The R1 okay. and R2s. So I'm Xbox. All right, Bonfire? At launch, I'm getting the PlayStation 4. And no. I'll tell you why. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I might get flack for it, but that's okay. I got a few reasons why. One, I like what Sony's doing. I like the, the their moves, the PR that they're doing. I like that they're standing up for gamers. I like that. Um, two, it, for me, initially at launch, it came price. Is a huge factor for me. That hundred dollar difference means I can get almost two games, as yeah. opposed to Xbox. Right. And then um, I, I love the Xbox 360 controller, so going to a PlayStation 4 controller is going to be difficult if I if I pick up some shooters. Um, but also I I think PlayStation 3 has stronger exclusives, or at least Sony as a in general does than the Xbox. Um, and we haven't. For the PlayStation, we haven't heard from all of their studios, and they I know they have a lot of uh, studios under under their belt. So I, I have a feeling they're going to come out with some some strong exclusives, you know, probably announce next year's E3, and I'm looking forward to that. But again, I, I will get both, but I'm starting out with the PlayStation 4. Okay. Um, back to Oyster. I'll, I'll get the Xbox at first, just because... Well, a couple of reasons. One, I think the exclusive for the Xbox, we can agree to disagree on this from Bonfire. I think the Xbox <laughs> exclusives look a little better, personally. Like, I made a video about this already, too. I'm just going to keep plugging my videos in here. You guys should go check them out. But, um, I think, I, I've always wanted to try Forza, which I'm probably going to get Forza Horizons this weekend, also. Uh, I want to play Titanfall. I want to play Dead Rising 3. I want to play Rise, Son of Rome. Also, Call of Duty always comes first for me. So, competitive Call of Duty is probably going to stay on Xbox, and I'm trying to get more into that, and plus, it's just easier to watch on that. Plus, this Xbox will still get the DLC first on Xbox, or uh, for Call of Duty DLC, that is. I don't think people have been thinking of that as much, even though it's not a huge deal, but it still matters, like, for YouTubers, getting it a month early makes a difference. So, I'll probably go with the Xbox. Also, the controller, apparently, is way better for the Xbox. And yeah. the PS3 controls are different, like uh, you guys already touched on. But, like, I w I've only played uh, COD on a PS3 once, and it was playing Modern Warfare 2. I played I went over to one of my friend's house, and he had a PS2, PS3, and we played it. And, like, all the controls, not all of them, but some of the controls were inverted. Like, like exactly. the grenade like the grenade button and the aim button. So I would try to aim down sight, and I'd, like, chuck a stun or something. And, like, yep. it was just confusing. You so, I'll, you know. Right, so I'll pro I'm going to go with the Xbox One. If I manage to, you know, because I'll get that for Christmas, right? So I'm not going to have to pay for it. But if I manage to save up enough money, I might end up getting the PS4 maybe a year later or two years later, depending on how things go. And, and you're yeah. talking about exclusives. I agree that at launch, the Xbox 360 has better exclusives. And making the decision for the PlayStation 4 at launch was, was tr a very difficult one. But I think, like I said... I think Microsoft has played all their cards as far as what they're working on then is going to be within, I'd say, a year launch window. I don't think Sony has because, again, we haven't heard from all of their top-notch studios. Like, for example, Naughty Dog, who just released The Last of Us, they're probably working on a next-gen title. We have no idea what it is. Um, I think Sony Santa Monica Studios, I think that's another big one. Yeah. 
yeah. haven't heard from them. So I, I know they've got a couple things under their belt that we haven't heard that I think are going to be PlayStation exclusives that oh, I think will just will blow it out of the water. So I think the unknown plays a big factor as far right. as the consoles go. And so, but at you're the, right. Yeah. I at the Xbox same time, though, at the same time, I'd rather bank on exclusives I know are coming out than what may sure. come out. Although I see your point. Hybrid, yeah. we didn't ask you what which one are you getting and why. Oh, I'm definitely getting the Xbox One, mainly because. I mean, I'm not doing it for friends or anything, but a majority of them are getting it. And then the main main reason I'm getting it is competitive. Because I know that, uh, I mean, if you go to all these lands like MLG Dallas, uh, like, there's Xboxes. There's not PS3s or... Uh, it's just Xbox is mainly for competitive. Well, Xbox is... It's better for competitive. Yeah, yeah. I'd say it's better for shooters as a general. Yeah, in general, it's better for shooters, and shooters are mainly what's played competitively on exactly. console. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no and, arguments there. And the reason the reason why I asked about if, do you think you're getting the the price you pay for or what you pay for, whatever the question I asked earlier, right? Because uh, in my house, there's two Xbox players, so we have two Xboxes right now. So I am gonna have to drop a thousand dollars right off the bat. Right, yeah. So. Same here, because my dad plays Xbox some, and, you know, plus just for, as an entertainment system, like, I think people are overlooking that. Like, I think Microsoft kind of shot themselves in the foot by making it $100 more in this aspect, but people who are just, you know, looking for maybe a family that, you know, they have young children or whatever, and they're trying to get something that, you know, they can play video games on, but they can also use it for other things, like watching movies or whatever, they'll be more likely to buy the Xbox, too. But Exactly. Right. So. Yeah, and I think that Microsoft is going to tell this every time you ask about price compared to the PlayStation 4, is they're going to say, you're getting more with the the Xbox because they have all those exclusive rights. You talked on it like football and Twitch, and they're coming out with their own TV content, all that stuff. And you're right, yeah, it, it appeals to a larger market, and I think that will help them in the long run. So. Yeah. Anybody else have anything else to add before we wrap it up? Um, no. Nope. Nope. All right, then. Um, that's episode five of Three More Exploits. Thank you, Nascent Hybrid and Nascent Squeaks, for joining us. You guys did well. Check them out on Twitter, at Nascent. Is it Nascent underscore gaming? Or? Nascent yes. underscore gaming. And yes. that is N-A-S-C-E-N-T, by the way, spelling-wise. We'll link it in the description of the video and everything. But yep. check them out on Twitter. Check out their competitive team. I don't know if you guys are streaming or anything like that. Um, but uh, You should start. I think that would get would help you guys. Yeah, but check out their Twitter. Check them out. Um, Game site bonfire. That's your channel. Be linked in the description. Yep, uh, check it out. I'm Tactical Oyster. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you guys next week.